Hi, I'm Danny Gregory, and in this set of tutorials, I'm going to teach you how to draw. Do you remember when you first learned to read and write? Maybe when you were five or six years old, and you were taught 26 different symbols that, when arranged in different ways, could communicate just about anything. Any idea under the sun could be put into words on paper. Wouldn't it be cool if you could do the same with drawing? What if there was an ABCs of drawing? Well, there is, and I'm going to teach you it today. It comes from a brilliant book by Mona Brooks called Drawing with Children, in which she explains the following system that we're going to use. There are basically five different types of shapes that make up anything you want to draw. So there are two types of symbols, I guess we'll call them, that you'll need. One is lines, and the other is shapes. And when it comes to lines, first of all, we have straight lines. So straight lines, again, you don't have to be able to draw them with a ruler, but basically it's a straight line like that. It might go at an angle, it might go up and down, it might go this way and that, but it's a straight line. The next line, type of line, is a curved line. And a curved line goes like this, but it might also go like this. It's basically a line that has a roundish element to it. Curved lines. And the next type of line is an angle. So an angle might go like this, or an angle might go like that. Uh, it doesn't really matter, but again, each time it's just an angle. So shapes might be a dot. So a dot could be like that, but it's filled in. So a dot is, is a circle, but it's filled in. Or it might be a more organic shape, like that. Or it might be a really super complex shape, but we call it a dot because it's filled in. Filled in like a dot. And then the other type of shape is what we call a circle which could be a circle like that, but again, it could be an oval, or it could be an amoeba shape. It could be a kidney shape. But the difference is a dot is filled in and a circle is not. Okay, so that's it. Five different types of shapes. Five different elements. Straight lines, curves, angles, dots, and circles. Arrange them in different ways, and they'll make a picture of anything you want. Okay, well, let's try drawing this cup of tea using only those elements that we just talked about. So first of all, let's try using a circle. It's not quite a circle. It's really an oval, but that doesn't matter. Now let's take this shape, and that is a dot, right? Because it's filled in, right? So, all right, so now let's take this. It's a straight line, straight line. And this is a curve. It's a curve. This is a little straight line, okay? And this is, in a way, a curve, too. It's just a curve that's sort of shaped like a backward C. This is, that's right, a circle, because it's a closed shape. And then we have another curve here. And then we can also draw four lines around it. And there we go. And there it is. It's a drawing that looks just like the original one, made up entirely of those elements that we just discussed. Let's try something else. How about a chicken? <laughs> All right, so I'm going to draw the straight lines again. Here we go. Straight line, straight line, and straight line. Now, let's look at this. This is a curve. It's a curve. And what is this? It's kind of shaped like uh, sort of a kidney, which means, that's right, it's a circle. And this, it's a dot. Now, this is essentially an angle. That's an angle, that's an angle, and this is an angle, and that is an angle. Here we have another curve, an angle, an angle, and a curve, and another curve. And here we have basically a straight line that turns into an angle, another angle, another angle, another angle, and another angle. 
And here we have six dots or circles, depending on whether you want to fill them in or not. Here we have another curve. We have two straight lines. And we have basically, I guess this could either be a straight line or it could be a dot. Again, it doesn't really, really matter whether you whether it falls into one category or another, as long as you can think about it that way, and you can look at this and you can go, okay, that is a straight line, that is basically a little circle, and that is sort of another circle, maybe it's an angle, and of course we need to put in his beak. There it is, another little angle. So now let's have a look at him, there it is. We drew that just now, made up entirely of these little elements. All right, let's try something a little trickier. Now, instead of taking just a drawing, let's take a photo and see if we can use the ABCs of drawing to turn it into a drawing. Isn't she a beauty? That's my buddy Twiglet. And we are going to see if we can turn her into a series of lines and drawings. Lines and straight lines, curves, angles, circles, and dots. Okay, so let's look at the top of her head. It's kind of straight. Sorry, buddy. The top of your head is kind of straight. And then this is, a, this is another straight line. And there's a bit of an angle there. But you can look at, see, it's kind of a straight angle. I uh, mean, it's a right angle. And then this is a little bit of a curve. And then over here, her other ear is also a curve. And then this part of her head is a curve, too. We have a line here. And then we have this shape. If we wanted to do this shape, we could do it like that as a single shape. We can take her eyeball, make that into a shape. That is that is a circle, sorry. And uh, if we wanted to draw the little highlights, we could make that into two circles, and then we could fill in this one behind it and make it into a dot. So, color that in. Now let's look at her nose. Her nose is basically a circle. And then she has her nostril, right? The nostril is a form of circle because it's a closed shape. And then there's a straight line that kind of goes down there. Now let's look at her overall muzzle. It's basically a nice circle like that. Then her mouth comes down like that. She always looks like she's mad, but she's never mad. She's always happy. And then here's her other eye, which is a circle. The highlights, which are two more circles, and then we'll fill in this eyeball to make it a dot. Okay, and then we have one more curved line over here. And then if we want to, we could put another little curve, a little curve, and then we would have this final curve there. Now we look at her chest. Her chest is a curve. And then we have her, she has another curve here. Her leg is basically two lines and a curve, or it could be a circle. And we can draw her little toenails. Same thing here, a line, a line, a line, a line, and a curve. And then three more lines. See how this is all working? Very nicely. Another curve. Here we have a curve of her butt that goes down to her leg. Another curve on her inside of her leg. Two straight lines. And another curve. And finally, her tail, which is basically a circle and another circle. So now let's have a look at this drawing without the photo. And there she is in all her, all her glory. A series of lines and circles and shapes that we call Twiglet. This is a really useful tool to help you to, again, avoid labeling the things you see, except to label them in terms of these five elements. Anything that you want to draw, a building, uh, an, a truck, a sandwich, a person, they can all be reduced to this conversation that you're having with yourself by looking at something and saying, what is that? Is it a straight line? Is it an angle? And if it is an angle, what kind of an angle is it? If it is a curve, what kind of a curve is it? And if it is something as complex as a circle or a really complex dot, slowing it down 
and just trying to look at that individual shape and draw it will always be a way of translating what you're seeing into what's on the paper. Now, there may come times when a piece, when a, an element looks really, really complex and you just say, well, this shape is so complicated that this doesn't really work for me. Well, look at that individual shape, isolate it, and then see, can you break that shape into component shapes? So is something that looks like a, just a weird complex set of bumps, is it actually made up of half a dozen circles? Or has it got a couple of curves in it that turn into an angle? Anything can be broken down at these elements. Just be patient, look hard, think about it, and then copy it down. You're going to end up with essentially a contour drawing every time, but then that contour drawing can become the basis for any kind of art that you want to make. If you wanted to make uh, a fully shaded drawing, if you wanted to make um, something that you did on your iPad, if you wanted to make an oil painting from it, you'll have this armature, you'll have this basic outline that you can then work on. And you can translate this from another drawing, you can translate it from a photograph, you can even translate it, best of all, from just looking with your eyeballs at any three-dimensional object in space and figuring out how to break it down into these elements. The ABCs of drawing, really simple, and when you combine those with some of the other things we've talked about, negative space, when you talk about um, measurement, and when you talk, use uh, your various reference points, you will see how anything, when you break it down, when you think about it, when you have a strategy for how to draw it, can be drawn, and you can draw it yourself. You just need to keep practicing with these tools you don't need God-given talent. You just need some patience, a little bit of hard work, some practice, and lots of fun. Because if you make it fun, you'll keep doing it. If you make it a slog and if you beat yourself up while you're doing it, it's going to be a drag and you're probably going to give up midway. So keep it fun, keep it light, and draw Twiglet. She's lots of fun.